How would you like to bolt an extra 100 horsepower onto your grocery getter? We'll show you how right now on Horsepower TV. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll pack some power into Chuck's wagon with a new supercharger, then put her on the chassis dyno to discover how many extra horses this grocery getter gets. We'll show you the inside story on intakes and help you find the manifold for your machine. Plus, we'll take you to the annual Super Bowl for high-powered Harleys on the fast quarter-mile track in Kentucky. We like fast. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hi, glad you joined us. You know, the hunt for horsepower is relentless. Whether you're sitting astride a two-wheel hot ride like one of these we'll play with later, or even a 1970 Chevelle grocery getter like Chuck's. Yeah, that's right. That 454 makes plenty of power. In fact, it cranked out about 220 rear wheel horsepower on that last run. But I tell you what, there were a couple of times this summer when I just about didn't make it home before the ice cream melted. Oh, we can't have that. Now today, we're going to fix that, though. We're going to bolt on one of those sneaky superchargers. Yeah, I like the idea of that hidden horsepower, especially when it only takes a few hours at home and, well, it's about as simple as swapping out your intake manifold. It really is. Now, you will have to add a couple of drive pulleys, but you get to keep all your stock accessories and brackets. Tell you what, I'm going to start by draining the radiator. And I'll check our parts. The kit we ordered from B&M is their 174 power charger for big block Chevys, and it's a roots type lower with rotors that are Teflon tipped for maximum boost efficiency. Now, the kit also includes this intake, pulleys, an idler, and a serpentine belt drive system. Now, that blower is flanged for a single four barrel. Hey, we could use that stock quadrajet back there, but we're looking for even more performance, so we're going to use this 750 CFM vacuum secondary piece from Holly. Well, let's get that hood out of the way, then we can start unbolting the. Now, before you can bolt anything up, you need to make sure the mating surfaces are perfectly clean. Then you can drop on those gaskets. Now, the blower kit comes with these cool Felpro high-performance gaskets. And check this out. They've already got this silicone sealant in place. Now, make sure you run a bead of silicone on each end of the block, and then you're ready to drop the intake in place. Now, before we can bolt up that blower, we've got a couple of things that we need to take care of, like installing that blower drive pulley. Now, B&M offers an assortment that allows you to vary your boost, and well, we're going to start with this one that's going to give us 5 to 7 PSI. Of course, the smaller ones will spin the blower faster and give you even more boost. I'm going to put a little thread lock on the bolt here to keep it from backing out. And here's the tip, stuff a clean rag in this carb opening so the rotors won't turn while you torque it down. Yeah, now we're going to torque it down to about 30 pounds. With the gasket on our intake, we're ready to drop on the blower. Now, there she goes. We'll keep her in place with these four retaining bolts that came with our kit. Now, this thing may look small, but it delivers some big power. In fact, we're looking for an extra 100 horsepower once we're finished with this project. That's right, and we're going to do it for under $2,000. Now, I see you've been busy. You've got the fan and the shroud out of the way so we can put these bottom drive pulleys on. Tell you what, let me show you how it all goes together. Now, we're using this display engine to give you a little bit better look, but you want to remove the stock retaining bolts. Then you add the spacer so this lip fits inside your stock pulley. Drive pulley goes on next, and it's all secured with the longer bolts that are supplied in the kit. Torque them to 35 foot-pounds, and don't forget a little bit of thread lock. Now we're ready for the idler pulley. It installs under the blower snout with this bracket here, and it's spring-loaded to keep tension on the belt. Hey, we're getting really close to putting some fire in the hole, but can't do that without the distributor, so with number one cylinder at top dead center, we can drop this distributor in, making sure the rotor lines up with the number one plug position using this mark we put on the body here. 
Then we put back the hold down clamp, the wires, and the cap. Now check out this neat little bracket we found in the B&M catalog. It mounts both the throttle cable and the kick down cable. Just bolts right up between the blower and the carb. We also ordered this cool fuel line kit, which goes on next. Now we'll plumb this to the fuel pump using Russell AN fittings and braided steel line. Now I've already gone ahead and installed the blower dry belt, and that showed us a clearance problem we had between it and the stock fan. So we're going to upgrade our cooling system with this low profile dual fan unit from Flexalite. Now it's got an adjustable thermostat for automatic temperature control and with these ties it uh, just attaches to the back of the radiator. Well that puts the wraps on our wrenching for now. Go ahead and fire up Chuck. Alright sounds good but the big question is how much more horsepower do we get from our grocery getter? Go ahead and back her in. We'll see what the dyno jet has to say about that when we come back. Stay with us. Later in the show, some fast hauling Harleys as we take you to the ADPA Finals in Kentucky. Plus, we'll take a close look at the latest in high-performance intakes. Don't go away. Welcome back to Horsepower TV. And speaking of which, we've got our new blower bolted onto this 454 Chevelle, and our dyno jet's all set for another run. How about the driver? Well, I'm ready. Let's see what it'll do. Check the graph, man. We got just over 330 horsepower at the rear wheel. Man, that B&M blower sure did its job. Now, that's over 110 horsepower more than we got on the baseline. Plus, I won't have to worry about my ice cream melt anymore. And just think what it's going to do for my EET. EET? That's right. Elapsed eating time. <laughs> oh, I should have known. Well, here's something else to put on your plate today. We've got to dummy up the drivetrain on our 39 Buick here. Well, I hope we haven't bitten off more than we can chew. Now, even though we're using our 39 Buick as an example, setting up the drivetrain is about the same for any street rod. We've got this thing secured on jack stands with pretty much the same rake that it'll have once it's finished. Now, you might recall a couple of weeks ago when we welded on this Fat Man Mustang front end kit. Well, today we're going to use their universal engine mount kit to properly position our drivetrain. Now, it comes with these stands and gussets, and we also ordered this universal cross member for our transmission. Now, before we bring our engine in, there are a few things that we need to get out of the way. First, we're going to get rid of this pedal assembly, the master cylinder, and this old cross member. Well, now that we've got a nice open area for our powertrain combo, let's get it into place here. We're using plastic replicas of our engine and tranny from Pierre Products. This will give us the dimensions we need without breaking our backs. As you'll notice, we've got a level here on the carb flange. When that bubble is centered up, which it is now, it just about gives us the three degree engine angle we want. Yep, it's level all right. Now we're ready to determine our fore, aft, and vertical positions of our powertrain. We've already marked the firewall location here on the frame, and we want the back of the engine about three inches in front of that. Now that's going to put the majority of the engine weight behind the center line of the front spindle, and it's also going to give us the radiator clearance that we need. Now before we lower the engine, we need to establish our crank center line. Give me the old mark there, Charles. a boy. Now this will help keep the engine centered side to side. Now you want to lower the engine, making sure we get it down as far as possible in the chassis. Now, we've got plenty of cross-member clearance here, but you might want to check yours just to be safe. You also want to check your ground clearance. After all, you don't want to smash that oil pan every time you pull out of your driveway. Okay, using our mark, let's see if we're centered up. We got 13 three quarters over here. And over here, we're good. Well, now that we got the engine where we want it, I've gone ahead and taped it to the cross member to keep it from moving around. I'm going to take this frame mount, bolt it up, and we're going to do some trial fitting here. Now, we're going to make that first cut from there to there. 
Now I've finished making my mark here and I'm cutting to the inside of it so we can sneak up on that final fit. That looks pretty good. Now we're ready for the gusset. We just put our gusset here against the main mount and we'll mark it. That's where we'll begin our vertical cut. Of course, you just duplicate everything on the other side here. Now, while Chuck finishes tacking them up, I'm going to bolt this cross member to our tranny mount. All right. Now we're ready to measure from the cross member to the bottom of the frame, and you want to make sure the distance is the same on both sides. Then we can go ahead and add this vertical support that we made. All right. Now we've welded our vertical supports in place and drilled a couple of holes here through the frame. Now we got a removable cross member. Good job there. Now here are those engine mounts with our gussets all tacked in. All you have to do now is finish welding and you can drop in your real powertrain. Well, hang with us. We got more horsepower TV ahead. Light up. Next, it's all Harley and all American two wheel thrills. We'll take you to the fashion bowling green. Stay with us. Hey, we like anything that makes horsepower from cool cars to, well, hot rods with handlebars. Check this one out. Now, it can't make up its mind whether it's a 57 Chevy or a Harley Davidson. And actually, it's a little bit of both. It's a one-off creation by Paul Herman from Hendersonville, Tennessee. And it's hand fab from original sheet metal, including the headlight bezel and louvers, the hood bullet, and, well, even the dash is built in. Well, so much for the beauty. Now for the beast. This is a Harley Pro Dragster owned by John and Cindy Biller of Nashville, and it's built with one purpose in mind, going fast in a straight line. It's got two world records for ET and mile an hour. And the place where it happened? The annual Super Bowl of Speed for Fast Holland Harleys. Once you've got it in your blood, you just you can't get rid of it. Right now, Harleys is where it's at. Right up. I've raced for years, so I should be used to it, but I think it's still a rush every time. Who wouldn't get a rush riding a Harley down the quarter mile, hitting 200 or more in less than seven seconds? It's a thrill just to watch these fast hauling Harleys, especially here at the American Drag Bike Association's World Finals. They are fast, they are fantastic, and they never stop. In addition to amateur divisions, the All Harley Drags feature some serious contenders in classes like Top Fuel, Pro Drag, and Pro Stock, in which Chaz O'Neill is Rookie of the Year. Like it shot out of a cannon, you know, it, you don't have much time to think, but it's wonderful when you get down to the end, your old heart's pumping, you feel good, and you're going, yeah, good run, you know? Veteran writer Linda Jackson just graduated to the Pro Stock ranks after years of competition in top gas. I think, you know, Pro Stock's everybody's dream. If you've raced in the gas classes, ultimately you want to get the Pro Stock. If you're looking for the big tire and the bigger motors, I'm just a horsepower nut, always have been. Uh, got the opportunity to do this and, and, and forever grateful for that. Tennessee and Red Bray's class of choice is Pro Fuel. He's got a bike with a fuel-injected motor locked in high gear. It feels kind of lazy leaving, but boy, in the middle of the racetrack, does it pull hard. I mean, it really drills you back. And you can tell by the time you get to the eighth mile whether or not you're on a good pass or not. This weekend, the man to watch is the ADBA's king of the hill, top fueler Johnny Mancuso. Already this year's IHRA champ, He's gunning for another title with his nitro-powered Harley with a 157 cubic inch overkill engine. He's a man. It's a big motor. It uh, uses a side-by-side -side connecting rod, the same types of connecting rods that's used in the top fuel cars. This motor actually develops about 625 horsepower, and it'll propel the bike over 207 miles an hour in 6.6 .6 seconds. So what's it like to rock it down the strip on a six-second nitro-burning boss hog like this? Actually, the quicker and faster it goes, the better off it, it is, the easier it is to handle. When the bike is really making a good run, it'll leave real hard, it'll jump up on the wheelie bars, and it'll carry the front tire for anywhere from 800 to 1,000 feet.
with qualifying runs way into the night, the scene was set for a red-hot Harley drag eliminations on Sunday. Yes, I'm qualified fourth. Pretty darn good for the little motor that we've got. We have to work awfully hard to stay in the hunt. Linda lost in round one of eliminations, as did Chaz O'Neill. But let's fast forward to the finals. Dirk Higgins from Upper Sandusky, Ohio, powered his 96 Buell to an 824 at 153 miles an hour to win pro stock. Bob Potty from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, took pro drag honors with a 750 at 173. And Mike Romaine from Sturgis, Michigan, was the winner in pro fuel with a 710 at 149. Then the big moment, finals of top fuel. Johnny Mancuso already with enough points to win the championship against Steve Moore from Spartanburg, South Carolina. There goes Moore, but where's John? In a freak accident, a cylinder base boat flies loose, breaking two ribs and bruising Mancuso's heart. John's a good friend of mine. We've been racing all together all year long, and it's, it's heartbreaking, man. I don't like winning them like that, but what do you do? You grin, bear it, and pray he's okay and keep getting it. Mancuso was okay, all right, and after a brief hospital visit, well, he went on to race a few weekends later. You can bet he'll be back in the hunt for another ADBA championship next year. In this wild, fast-growing sport, it's all Harley and all American horsepower fun. Hi, right, welcome back to the shop. It takes efficient intake to make power. Right now, we thought we'd look at some induction basics to help with your performance goals. Now, as we look at this engine cutaway made for us by the folks at Wyoming Tech, the gas-air mixture travels through runners like this one before it's combusted. The more efficient the flow, the more power you make. Now, we've cut apart a couple of Edelbrock intakes here to show you the difference and to help you make the right choice. Now, this is a dual plane design that feeds one side of the engine from one side of the carburetor. Now, generally, the runners are fairly small for good port velocity, and, of course, that translates to good low to mid-range power. Now, if you run a drag car with plenty of gear, cam and compression, well the single plane intake is the right choice for you. Now it pulls from a common plenum here and the runners are considerably shorter with a lot more volume. Of course this intake works best in the mid to upper RPM ranges. And remember, the bigger the engine and the higher the RPM range, the more port and plenum volume you need. Now the next step up is the tunnel ramp. And like the single plane, it uses a common plenum, but as you can see, it's much larger, and so are the runners. Now, these are used a lot for racing, usually mounting a couple of competition carbs. However, we have seen some on some serious street machines, but don't consider one of these monsters unless you have extensive head work and, again, lots of cam and gear. Now, this is the ultimate intake. It's a hand-fabricated sheet metal piece from Hogan's Racing Manifolds. Racers use them when they've optimized the flow of their heads by relocating the intake port. This intake allows you to match that relocated intake port and precisely tune the runner and plenum volume to the engine's particular bore stroke ratio and power band. Ooh, gee, Professor Power. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> impressive hardware there. Can I get one of these for my wife's Lumina? I don't <laughs> think so. But I hope that you and your machine will breathe a little bit easier thanks to our inductive reasoning. Ooh, I should deduct some of your salary for that one. Stay with us. Hot Parts is next. Now, Horsepower's Hot Parts, brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, your source for high-performance parts for 30 years. We've all heard the term, a shift in time saves nine. Of course, we're talking about tenths of a second on a drag strip here. Now, if you run a 700 R4 Trans, you'll probably be interested in this shift recalibration kit from SLP Engineering. Now, not only does it tighten up your shifts for improved performance, but it also adds to your transmission's durability. Now, you can install one of these in about three hours without removing the transmission. Of course, if you want one of these, it will be necessary to remove about 100 bucks from your wallet. If you'd like an easy, accurate way to measure your vehicle's performance, well, how about this GTEC Pro Performance Meter? And this thing attaches to your windshield just like a radar detector, and it'll give you zero to 60 and quarter mile numbers, plus horsepower and G-forces. 
Now, it uses a precision accelerometer and other high-tech electronics to give you information you can use to fine-tune your vehicle. Of course, you'll have to tune up your budget about $140. Hey, nobody likes to work in a sloppy shop, and whether you're at home or the racetrack, here's an easy way to get organized. Now, these trick tool trays and convenient cabinets from Pit Pal products have hundreds of uses. Whether it's keeping things organized between rounds, or just keeping things off the garage floor between projects. You see a lot of those hanging on trailers at the track, and check this out. It's a handy table that puts your work surface where you need it. And here's something we need for you to watch next week's Horsepower TV. We'll drop our 502 big block into Project Blue Thunder, plus install a high-performance tranny, headers, and exhaust. We'll get some pinstriping tips from a pro as he puts the paint to our 32 Roadster. Plus, we'll take you to the track and follow some drag racing stars of tomorrow as they pursue their own passion for power and speed. Felt kind of scary. Felt good. And remember, high-performance fun is what this show is all about. Let me give you a hand with this hood. Let's sling it on the supercharged station wagon. I'm taking bets again. Uh oh, no bets today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, set it down in there. Okay. There we go. Now we're ready for those bolts. Horsepower TV is an RTM production.